shooting, the gunman firing into a kindergarten classroom, the school custodian locking the doors just eight to ten seconds before the suspect got there. New video just in tonight after that suspected serial killer strikes again. The moment authorities want everyone at home to see. The new storm and holiday travel, the major system now moving across this country. The Midwest, then the East Coast, snow, heavy rain and wind. And authorities on the psychopath who escaped. You will see him in a taxi, what he says to his driver. The new audio right here tonight. The flight he then gets on and where he ends up. And the new Earth-sized planet, it could be habitable. How close is this one? This is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a Wednesday night, and we begin with President Trump back after his 12-day trip to Asia, saying his trip restored America's standing in the world after, quote, previous mistakes were made over many years by other administrations. He said NATO is, quote, very happy with Donald Trump, and that countries he visited are united against North Korea. But now back home, the president refusing to answer any questions about Roy Moore. Tonight, Moore's own attorney before the cameras just a short time ago, and what he now says... About that fifth accuser, ABC's chief national correspondent Tom Yamas starts us off from Alabama. President Trump tonight refusing to turn his back on Roy Moore. Our Cecilia Vega at the White House pressing him on whether Moore should drop out. Should Roy Moore resign, Mr. President? Do you believe his accusers? Do you Silence from the president. Roy but tonight, his daughter Ivanka is speaking out, telling the Associated Press there's a special place in hell for people who prey on children. I've yet to see a valid explanation, and I have no reason to doubt the victim's accounts. One of those accounts from Beverly Young Nelson, who says Moore sexually assaulted her when she was 16. She said he told her nobody would believe her story. He said, you're just a child. And he said, I am the district attorney of Ottawa County. Nelson says that's the last contact she had with Roy Moore. Moore has said he never met her and does not know her. But tonight, Moore's lawyer fighting back, say Moore was actually a judge in Nelson's divorce case in 1999. There was contact. Judge Moore signed an order in that case. The lawyer also wants a handwriting expert to evaluate the inscription Nelson says Moore wrote in her high school yearbook. To a sweeter, more beautiful girl, I could not say Merry Christmas. Signed, Love Roy Moore, D.A. Look at the 1977 after Merry Christmas. Look at those two sevens. And then look below at the 77. And I want to ask you, do you think it was written by the same person? Moore denies any inappropriate sexual conduct with teenage girls, but not that he dated teenagers when he was in his 30s. Do you remember dating girls that young at that time? Not generally, no. If I did, you know, I'm not going to shoot anything, but I don't remember anything like that. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, who calls Moore unfit for the Senate, is urging a write-in candidate to step forward. The Alabamian who would you know, fit that standard would be the attorney general, who right. is totally well known and extremely popular in Alabama. Moore today tweeting the quote, Washington elite will do whatever it takes to stop him. They spent over $30 million to try to take me out. They've done everything they could, and now they're together to try to keep me from going to Washington. In Moore's hometown of Gatson, Alabama, Republicans I spoke with are torn. I find it strange that after 40 years somebody comes forward. I mean, why would you wait 40 years if that really did happen? If I'm Roy Moore, I get out of this race. You know, in my Mixed opinions there in Alabama. Tom Yamas with us live from Birmingham. And Tom, Roy Moore's campaign tonight challenging, of course, as you point out, that fifth accuser, Beverly Young Nelson. Roy Moore had said he didn't know her, but now, as you report, his lawyer says he was a judge in her divorce case. You've reached out to her lawyer? That's right. Gloria Allred has just gotten back to us. She says she has sent an email to the Senate Judiciary Committee. She wants her client to testify under oath in front of that committee and Roy Moore to do the same. If that happens, she will release that yearbook so independent experts can look at the handwriting. And David, we have some breaking news tonight. There is a new accuser in this case. She claims in the 90s she went to Roy Moore's office looking for legal help. He made her feel uncomfortable. This is what she alleges. And at the end of the meeting, he grabbed her by the backside. Roy Moore has denied all allegations of sexual misconduct. David. Tom Yamas leading us off tonight from Alabama. Tom, thank you. And as you heard there, the president did not answer questions from our Cecilia Vega about Roy Moore. And the president also comes home to something else that involves your money, your taxes. The president fired a warning shot before he left on his trip on a new tax plan, telling Republicans this. 
I want the House to pass a bill by Thanksgiving. I want all of the people standing by my side uh, when we get ready to sign by Christmas, hopefully before Christmas. But tonight, the Senate tax plan appears to be in jeopardy. Several Republican senators are voicing concern, and Republicans can only afford to lose two of them. So let's get right to ABC senior White House correspondent Cecilia Vega tonight at the White House. Cecilia, what are you learning, and do they still believe they're going to be able to sign a tax bill by Christmas? David, a senior official here at the White House just told me that they are still optimistic that Christmas is the target date for this signing. But here is the reality. Wisconsin's Ron Johnson today became the first Republican senator to say he is a no. He says the bill as it's currently written benefits big corporations over small businesses. Among the undecided, Susan Maine's Susan Collins, she says that late ad by Republicans to repeal that Obamacare mandate requiring all Americans to have insurance is wrong. That would add an estimated 13 million more Americans to the ranks of the uninsured. So, David, Christmas may be optimistic, but we will soon see. All right, Cecilia Vega live at the White House. Cecilia, thank you. Next tonight to that deadly rampage in Northern California, a gunman shooting into a kindergarten class. Police now identifying the gunman, and they now say his wife was actually his first victim. They have found her body. It was hidden under the floor in their home. And tonight, the school custodian who locked the door seconds before the gunman could get in. ABC senior national correspondent Matt Gutman in Red Bluff, California, again tonight. Quick thinking staff at this tiny school made that life or death decision in mere seconds. Eight to ten seconds had elapsed between the doors being closed for the lockdown and him appearing in the quad. Tonight, we learned that the elementary school's secretary ordered the lockdown, and video shows a custodian distracting the shooter who had rammed his truck into the school. The head custodian, who was shepherding students into the classroom, poked his head around the building, saw the gentleman, and drew his attention. It's my understanding that several shots were fired towards the custodian. This is every educator in America's worst nightmare. When I turned my back, our window was being blasted through. Dozens of rounds fired into the classrooms, but only one child wounded. It was a very, very good result to possibly the worst situation that I can imagine. But this community still reeling as the sheriff today unearthed the first victim murdered in Kevin Neal's killing spree, his wife, raising the death toll to five. He had literally cut a hole in his floor and literally just put her body in the floor and covered it up. And first thing Tuesday morning, Neil began his 25-minute rampage, first killing two neighbors. He then drove through the rural community before crashing into the school. Afterwards, the shooter continued on until he was finally killed by police in a shootout. And for the first time, we hear from the shooter's family. He clearly had no business with firearms. He had full-on paranoia and delusions. Matt Cuppin with us live again tonight from California. And Matt, we know the shooter was facing numerous charges before this shooting took place. A lot of people in that community, we just heard from her there, asking how then did he get the guns used in this rampage? That's a primary question here, David. Now, among those charges was assault with a deadly weapon. Under the provisions of those charges, he should have been prohibited from possessing a firearm. Somehow he circumvented that, procuring the components of a weapon and somehow assembling those two semi-automatic rifles that he used in that shooting in his own home. David. Matt Gupman in California again tonight. Thank you, Matt. We turn next here to a major new clue in the hunt for a possible serial killer in Tampa. Four people killed now, all in one neighborhood, striking again in recent days. Police now say the man seen in this surveillance video right here from the night of the first murder is the actual suspect in all of the others. And tonight there's also new surveillance video recorded just yesterday. And ABC's Victor Akendo with that surveillance. This is the new video Tampa police want you to watch closely tonight, showing a person walking moments before the latest victim of an apparent serial killer was gunned down early Tuesday. Police believe it's the same person spotted near the scene of the first murder and are now confirming this is their suspect. Same manner of walking, same manner of dress with a hood up. The FBI seen here going door to door after 60 year old Ronald Felton was murdered. The fourth victim shot to death in the last month all within a half mile, all walking alone in the dark. Yeah, I, I don't sleep at night. For the people who live in this neighborhood, no reprieve from fear. We thought it was over, that we had probably scared the person out of the neighborhood because the police presence is so great now, and then this happens. 
Police have gotten thousands of tips and they're hoping by increasing the reward to $91,000, someone with concrete information will come forward. David? Victor, thank you. We turn next to Washington tonight and that bombshell dropped yesterday on Capitol Hill. The congresswoman who said there are two congressmen who have harassed staffers still on the Hill right now. Well, tonight, a new bill to require training and to reform the process to file complaints for staffers on the Hill. And it comes as we have also learned about your money, that Congress has paid more than 16 million to settle complaints. Here's ABC's Mary Bruce on the Hill again tonight. Tonight, members of Congress are on a mission to clean their own house, taking on sexual harassment after that bombshell allegation. There are two members of Congress, Republican and Democrat, right now, who serve, who have been subject to review or not have been subject to review, but have engaged in sexual harassment. This is what allegedly happened to one staffer dropping off research at a member's home. And the young staffer is a young woman went there and was greeted with a member in a towel. It was a male who then invited her in. Um, at that point, he decided to expose himself. She left and then she quit her job. Tonight, some lawmakers want names. Well, I think it's good to get this stuff out, name them, um, just get it out, lay it out. Currently, victims go through 30 days of mandatory counseling, sign a non-disclosure agreement, undergo 30 days of mediation, and a month-long cooling-off period before filing any legal claim. Over the past 20 years, Congress has settled 260 cases related to workplace violations, including harassment, costing American taxpayers more than $16 million. It is opaque, it is not transparent, and it's really set up to protect the perpetrators. But a new bill would make counseling and mediation optional, allow anonymous complaints, and eliminate those non-disclosure agreements. This whole story exposing the different set of rules for staffers on the Hill tonight. Uh, Mary, in the meantime, this new bill would also mean big changes for accused lawmakers who settle harassment claims. David, this new bill aims to beef up transparency and accountability. If a lawmaker settles a claim, they would be named publicly, and they would have to pay that settlement out of their own pocket. David. Mary Bruce with us live again tonight. Mary, thank you. We want to turn next to that storm that could cause real problems for holiday travel. A new storm moving across the country tonight. Winter weather alerts already in nine states. The threat reaching all the way to the East Coast by the weekend after traveling right there through the Midwest as the Thanksgiving holiday travel gets underway. Let's get right to meteorologist Rob Marciano tracking this again tonight for us. Hey, Rob. Hey, David, as you mentioned, it's a big storm going to traverse the entire country, starting with the West Coast tonight. Seattle down to San Francisco, heavy rain, high winds, an atmospheric river pointed right at Northern California. Really concerned about the wine country, a wildfire area that could see some mudslides with all the rain coming in tonight. Then it pushes inland, some snow in the mountains, and by Friday, we're through Minneapolis and Chicago with rain there. Saturday, getting in through Cincinnati, D.C., eventually into New York, the entire East Coast over the weekend. Just as you mentioned, people are starting their holiday travel. Kind of a mess. David? Rob Marshall. Marciano with us again tonight. Thank you, Rob. Nonetheless, overseas tonight in an apparent military coup in Africa, Zimbabwe's President Robert Mugabe at 93, the world's oldest head of state, is now under house arrest tonight. The military appearing to be in charge of the Capitol and state TV, but they insist this is just a, quote, bloodless correction. That show of force after Mugabe fired his deputy, putting his wife in a potential place to actually replace him, no word on whether the military is going to allow that to happen. Back here at home tonight, three UCLA basketball players now apologizing after an international incident. This apology comes after they were arrested for shoplifting during a team trip to China last week, suspended from the team indefinitely tonight. Today, President Trump tweeting, suggesting they should thank him for their freedom. Here's ABC's Lindsay Davis. The three UCLA basketball players at the heart of an international shoplifting scandal giving President Trump what he asked for, a thank you. To President Trump and the United States government, thank you for taking the time to intervene on our behalf. The thank yous come after President Trump tweeted, do you think the three UCLA basketball players will say thank you, President Trump? They were headed for 10 years in jail. LiAngelo Ball, Jalen Hill, and Cody Riley were arrested in China during the president's Asia trip after stealing from three different stores. The president asked the leader of China for help, and on Tuesday, they returned to American soil. Today, all three apologized. I've learned my lesson from this big mistake, and I'm 110% sure that I'll not make a bad decision like this one again. The UCLA coach described the three basketball players as good young men 
before announcing they are suspended indefinitely. David. Lindsay Davis, our thanks to you tonight. There is still much more ahead on World News tonight. This Wednesday, authorities calling him a psychopath. The escape and you will go path escape, got in a taxi, then boarded a flight and ended up in California. Here's ABC senior national correspondent Jim Avila tonight. Hey. The sooner we get there, the better. The man in the back seat of this cab is in a big hurry. He just escaped from a psychiatric hospital. I'm making a flight this way. And tonight, questions mounting. How did Randall Sato, a sadist and necrophiliac accused of a gruesome murder, get away? And did he have help? Sato was locked up for more than 35 years after being acquitted in the slaying of a young woman by reason of insanity. But around 10 o'clock Sunday morning, Sato slipped out of a Hawaii state hospital, walking about a mile to this park, where he was picked up by that taxi. Oh my God. How are you? Making a phone call to a possible accomplice. Um, I'm on my way. Chartering a plane from this small airfield to Maui, where authorities say he boarded a commercial flight to San Jose, California. The hospital not reporting their patient missing for nine and a half hours. Tonight, Sato arrested peacefully in another cab at this Stockton gas station. All of a sudden, there were sheriff cars all around. Um, and they went right up to him, and without incident, uh, were able to uh, apprehend him. David, the arrests were at these gas pumps. The cab was on the way to Reno. Back in Hawaii, authorities say they suspect an inside job. David? Jim Avila tonight. Thanks, Jim. When we come back, a new Earth-like planet. How close is it? Also, the pilot arrested trying to board his flight with a loaded gun. And then that truck driver who says he didn't notice he was pushing a the Southwest pilot arrested at the St. Louis airport. Police say TSA found a loaded gun in his carry-on. The unnamed pilot was preparing to fly to Las Vegas. Airport officials say he was not authorized to carry a weapon. To that scene on a highway in St. Louis, a rig pushing a car on Interstate 55, the car pinned to the truck's grill there, the car smoking, screeching, the truck driver claiming he did not see the car no one was hurt. And the newly discovered Earth-like planet tonight, scientists say Ross 128b may be able to support life. They say it was found orbiting a red dwarf 11 light years away. The temperature about the same as Earth. So close to the sun, though, the average year is less than 10 days. 10 days can feel like a year around here, too. When we come back here tonight...